Hi. Uh, I just wanted to do a different kind of stream tonight. Whereas like last two times I've been talking about my ideas, I thought it'd probably be a good idea for me to uh, maybe do one stream a week also focusing on what other people are doing out there in the world or just things that I noticed and things that like roughly cor correlate to the stuff that I'm trying to do or inspires me or whatever. So yeah, I'm good to this week. I'm just going to talk about um, some like a little bit of research I did in prep for the tools I want to develop and just some like maybe interesting talks that I saw. So i uh, going to bring up some text document here. All right. So in the past week, I saw many really interesting lectures, uh, but two of them that stood out for me um, uh, were from like two of my long-term sort of intellectual heroes, I guess. And I thought I would maybe comment for a bit on them. It's kind of like, I don't know. I'm basically a nobody and these guys are um, just hugely influential thinkers and academics and incredibly prolific, talented, smart people. So it's kind of silly, but you know, everybody has a voice. And so um, here's my two cents anyway. Um, so yeah, the first lecture I wanted to talk about was uh, one by Lawrence Lissig on that was given near the end of last month, but I just discovered it this week. And he's uh, how can I introduce this guy? I mean, if 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 you've been following Internet Freedom, you already know who he is. But if you don't know about him, you should look him up. He's he's been fighting for a free internet from the beginning. It seems like uh, um, he fought against the copyright extension against Disney back. I don't know how long ago that was. But yeah, he. I think he was one of the lawyers that helped break up Microsoft back in the day. Um, he's also one of the founders, or the, I don't know, one of the early advocates of the Creative Commons uh, community, and wrote many, many influential books, Code is Law, and uh, more, more recently, though, I think in the last 10 years, he's, he's focused on political corruption and how political corruption affects you know, the, basically the state of the internet and, uh, but not just that, but like he, basically he, 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 he gotta go listen to his lecture. Uh, just in a summary, um, uh, while they were fighting for free internet and other things, like they noticed that like, no matter what they do, uh, it's, it's kind of foolhardy when you're up against a, basically a, a a government that's been captured like re regulatory capture by uh the well funded by the wealthy um and 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 their concern was you know we can't we can't really solve our other problems and include, not just internet problems but uh like healthcare and climate change and poverty um all sorts of problems that we're unable to solve because our politicians are unfortunately, uh, as the way he puts it, they spend maybe like two thirds of their time just calling wealthy donors. So like most of the time they're in office, they spend two thirds of the time according to, uh, I guess I'm not, I'm not sure what, where the original research comes on this, but I, 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 I've heard it from many places, but yeah, the, the, the elected politicians in the U S in particular spend most of their time just talking to the wealthy. And then thus you see a core, this is all covered in his lecture much better than I'm covering it. You just, just go ch ch check it out. But yeah, they, this, uh, the, 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 basically if you look at the policies that are, are enacted, there's a high correlation between what the the wealthy want, and there's a very low correlation between what the general public wants. Um, and I, I like I think even like Noam Chomsky has been saying for decades and decades how you know even for, if you if you poll, do polls across the country of the U.S. and from Republican and Democratic communities, like 
people see eye to eye like like eight, there's almost like 80 to 90 percent agreement on a lot of issues like one issue particularly that he's talking about here is is removing big money from campaign contributions so that's kind of the key focus and yeah so he w w w the, the 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 lecture was called on what we know democratic candidates need to endorse Peter potus one and that's the president of the u.s one and that's what what he's saying there is basically that when the president comes into office or, or like what what with the uh Sorry, what the uh, the people running for president, they should all, according to him, um, make an oath or that, that the first thing they do when elected would be to enact election reform to take big money out of politics. And he, POTUS 1 is a reference to HR 1, which was a bill that was passed this past year. Uh, well, not passed, but passed by the House and blocked by the Senate. That would achieve a lot of, like, it would have overturned the Citizens United, which was granted a few years ago and allowed unlimited funds, basically, for political campaigns from corporations. And, and it, so, yeah, this this HR1, uh, many, the, the Democratic Congress was convinced that to make it the first priority when they were, as they, when they first gained the House in 2019, to be their job number one, to pass a bill. And all the Democrats voted for it unanimously, but of course the Senate blocked it. And but he, his hope is that if a presidential candidate endorsed this bill, that we could go a long way to basically taking the corrupt incentives out of our elections or out of the U.S.'s elections. And I'm from Canada. I think we we kind of have similar issues of regulatory regulatory capture. But it's it's always good to hear, and he says it way better than I ever could. So I'm sort of promised, but go check this guy out. Uh, so the next talk uh, I wanted to recap is uh, Evan Muglin. He's he's another just long term. He's he's basically I, 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 I don't I don't I don't know the full story, but he's um, him and Richard Stallman. Well, Richard Stallman is kind of like the founder of the Free Software Foundation or the Free Software Movement, and he and Evan Moglin was like his lawyer buddy that helped him draft a uh, legal framework uh, for the uh, you know the general public license that's used in uh, most free software products. And and Evan Moglin gives fantastic speeches. Uh, I, I, I recommend all his. Uh, it, it, like if you're if you're an open source advocate, then every time uh, this guy gives a talk, it's worth checking out. If you want to like feel a little bit mo more motivated to to get some work done and to participate and make a difference in the world. But yeah, it, this talk um, actually it's been a while since I've seen it, but I, it's not my favorite Evan Mogwin talk because. He focuses a lot on, but 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 he still makes a very valid, very good point. Uh, where here's what, like his concern on, on this talk was about. It's, it's it has a lot of overlap with the things I think you see Tristan Harris talking about in terms of the attention economy. Uh, basically. Concerns that are constant, the way social media is set up, that we have like a constant feed of new data that make it's making it harder and harder for users to focus on tasks on a long term basis. And we keep getting, and it gives everyone a kind of sort of like an, a little bit of an attention deficit. And, um, and yeah, I think I think he, I, I was a little bit concerned with how he framed things. I think it was a, a, a maybe a little bit um, I, um, exaggerating the n negative psychological effects of the, the social media, which I I, th I think they're there, but it. At the same time, I think you can't underestimate the, like he's concerned about the kids that have grown up with nothing but social media streams, throwing data at them their whole lives. 
And like, I, I don't know much about statistics and I'm not, a, he's, he's a university professor at Columbia University. So he probably sees students every day. So maybe he's noticing a trend and like, I'm completely disconnected from everything. I'm basically a hermit. I don't see any of that stuff, but I, I just know that it, it kind of made me feel a little bit like the age old, like the older always, the, the, the sorry, the, the, the grown, grown ups have always been, uh, concerned about the trends in the youth and I think the youth will be fine but and I think they are fine and I think they'll, they'll uh they're 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 learning in in new and different ways and probably they're more informed and capable than ever before in a lot of ways so but w w one thing I, one point that I do can do agree with completely is 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 that the way that the, these social media streams are set up is isn't conducive to long-term planning and and organization and mobilization it's it's more it's it can create large bursts of coordination on certain topics but it seems to be unable to support a uh, sustained um collaboration on issues but like or other platforms like wikipedia you see is like, is like a long-term sustained effort to create a better and better uh service so there are uh you know alternatives out there but at the moment it's true that um The, 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 the thing is, I think a lot of the 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 the, the, the things he criticizes the social media streams is is also true of the mainstream media streams and broadcast streams that go way back and and it might have been different uh, decades ago when basically everybody had the same broadcast stream but now the difference is everyone has a different stream but even back then. Uh, the topics would change quickly enough that people that it would be difficult to unless you were focused on a specific issue to stay focused on an issue so but i why wh wh i thought this was an interesting talk to bring up wh 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 where i think this ties into like my uh ideas a little bit or where i want to reflect like say i don't know i guess i, I guess i i don't know if if, if these luminaries or smart people were ever to listen to me I would I would advocate for for building platforms that allow that 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 are, that are designed to assist in long-term collaboration another another point of Evan Moglin's talk well, I mean this, this has been a long-term focus of him for decades like he I mentioned him previously in introducing in his talks on the freedom box and last night he also talked about or sorry in this last in this lecture that i'm referring to which was last week sometime i think um he refers to uh basically federating all the services so and i think by that he means like like you know we should be federating twitter we should be federating uber and we should be federating all of these the, uh, yeah, like, uh, and I agree. Like, there's, there's, it, it makes no sense to me that uh, we allow a giant tech company to, like, like Uber for example is is a giant tech company that's allowed to skirt all of the regulations that have been set up to regulate like the taxi industry, and the only real reason they're able to do that is because they're just such a large corporation and have so much influence i don't know like i don't know why the hammer hasn't fallen down on them uh so i don't know it's a place to go to that but i do think like something like uber could be easy could be federated there's no reason that all that money needs to be siphoned to some bureaucratic administration if if, if, if uber were an ethical corporation its goal would be to automate itself out of existence and i think this is true for most service company service companies they should be we should we should be looking to build long-term infrastructures not uh rent-seeking corporations 
like our, our information sh infrastructure should should be self-sustaining for everyone it shouldn't it shouldn't be a rent rent sinking oligarchy and that's just the way i see things and uh Uh, hold on a second, gotta take a break. Hi. All right. So that's the, those are the two lectures I wanted to talk about. Um, so now I also wanted to, so after getting those lectures out of the way, I wanted to introduce some technologies that I've been reading about. I, I guess I've been kind of aware of these for a while, but I haven't really looked too deeply into them. But I know that because I'm trying to build a platform that uh, is basically a federated service uh, that I should look into what, what's the state of the art out there and what's what's going on and, and there's a heck of a lot of work going on and it's it's actually kind of uh, intimidating to to try to keep up with but uh, so it's like just briefly um, I guess the, the things that I, that I advocate for advocated for previously are uh, basically local data banks. So when Evan Moglen was talking about federating all the services, I would like to locally federate all the services such that services are federated on a local basis. So local communities could have, like a data bank would be a place where local data could be stored and, and there could be uh, local technicians that, that can help people when they have technical problems creating, uh, I think, much more better reliable service than you can get currently from uh, any kind of mainstream corporation, but anyway, so uh, so I want local data centers fed with uh, creating federated services, such as and what what I mean by federated services is you know just like anything that you can think of on the internet that's a service right now that's being offered by a a giant corporation could could be a, a federated services based on open source code maintained and operated in local data uh, data banks and. And, but that's just my take. I haven't really seen too much of this local federation talk out there on the internet yet. So maybe it's out there. I, I'm just not aware of it yet. I, I'll, I'll look deeper for it. Maybe we'll cover it in a future. A cool things I learned about in science and technology and society this week or whatever I'm going to call this. Um, but anyways, yeah, so the, the, the technologies I heard about. And so these are technologies I might try to like. Okay, so the service that I'm particularly trying to build uh, or the federated service I'm trying to build is, is 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 a conflict resolution platform, but it's also a um, somewhat like Wikipedia in in, in in terms of it's 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 an it's an argument honing platform where arguments can be honed over time, and uh, and and this is where I think it's like a, like a long term collaborative effort like Wikipedia type of uh, a service rather than a, a simple. Uh, data stream, although there will be data stream components to it as well, as well of course. But, um, so at, at, to build my service, I, it, it would make a lot of sense for me to incorporate these uh, technologies that are already out there, especially when it comes to things like, well, let's get into it. Like first there's Solid. Sol Solid uh, is kind of like the brainchild of Tim Berns-Lee, who's one of the 
uh, or it's at least he's one of the chief advocates. Um, he's one of the, he was one of the, he, I think he came up with a WWW or HTML or protocol. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, he, 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 yeah. It was HTML or WWW or anyway, he's one of the, 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 the early guys of the, the World Wide Web in the nineties. And, uh, so he's, he's he's been a long-term intellectual uh, leader in terms of in the internet space, and Solid is kind of a, uh, so you can go you can Google uh, his talks about it or go search I should say not Google because yeah you try DuckDuckGo or anything <laughs> but uh, um, The, the 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 from what I I could gather I, I, I my research has only gotten so so deep into it, uh, it it's the solid is is his attempt at uh, is their attempt at a at a protocol to uh, help you have data ownership the the idea is is that like I mentioned previously that this is a key thing for me too is that basically that 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 everyone should be able to own their own data. And everyone should be able to choose who accesses their data, and uh, and no one should be able to access your data without you knowing and without your permission. And that's the idea. And and, and solid is 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 an attempt at a framework to to make that possible. Uh, and that they uh create the concept of something called a, a data pod and there's like federated, federated servers out there now where, where you can create your own pod already and the pod i believe will be encrypted such that no one can access it without your key so and and and, and without and it, yeah so I'm, I'm not sure on the details of the key exchange and signature system but Uh, but but it's it's quite advanced. They 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 have their own uh, W three C standard on linked data. I think that's what you can look up. I don't have that written down here. But yeah, and and one cool example of a uh, of a website that I seen built on Solid Tech is called Dokili. And this this actually what this website kind of blew me away. It's uh, Kind of like a d decentralized article publishing annotations and social interactions. Like I like this. This covers a lot of this. I, I think I'm going to be re-implementing a lot of what this guy did. And I'm I, he's I'm, I'm or or or, 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 or I, I don't know if it's a guy behind it. I'm sorry for my uh, uh, default pronouns and and whatnot. Uh, but you know, I, I I assure you that I I am open and accepting of everyone. Um. Anyways, uh, but it's it. I I recommend checking out that website. It's 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 it seems quite advanced way to 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 work on a document and even publish code and models in your documents and share them with other people and actually have people collaborate with you on documents. It looks it looks pretty badass to be honest. And if it, and it, and it seems to be respecting the hosting your own data privacy rights using the pod system okay so that not the best introduction to solid but uh just at least if you weren't aware, aware of it um it's, it's it's worth checking out now the, the the other tech i want to talk about is activity pub um and this is like basically the w3 recommended standard for that's being used for federated services and it's it's being used in Mastodon and PeerTube and a whole bunch of other federated services. And and essentially like look like the cool idea is um like like all federated services that use a spec kind of like interact interact with each other. So say you have like an identity on say you have a website and you have like an identity on it. Uh, you, you, if you're if, if if you're part of the federated network, say say you're on Mastodon or say you're on PeerTube, you, you can be, you can post on my past it. it um, like your identity is kind of uh, independent of the service that it's using. 
and each service is basically just another service that you let your granting permission to access and so it's, it's possible on a mastodon on feed to post a peer tube video for example and it and it all just kind of works and so it would probably be really useful to me to use this standard on on my service as well and, and this i think would help with the problem of of of, of making people's uh of, of, of protecting me from the liability of knowing people's IP addresses that use my service because it'll all be uh, yeah, basically protected by the, the protocols. So and, and these are both very deep complicated protocols that have uh, a lot of terminology and understanding so these are just poor introductions and uh, and I looked out there there's not really that much on YouTube yet there's a bunch of documents but um, I think activity pub is, is is more widely used and there's more uh, documentation out there on how to get it to work but these are all like very very young technologies so there's a little bit of use your own risk and they're it's because they're so complicated I don't think I'll be using these right away because it'll, I, I just, for now, I just kind of want to focus on the user interface of my platform. But long term, these are staying on my radar, and I'm going to try to learn more about these protocols over time as I work on my, on my, my own federated service. Uh, I guess, yeah, one other thing I can mention briefly is, uh, I there. I, Lawrence Lessing made an interesting tweet uh, asking people out there to uh, if there was some kind of Reddit style system for peer review of of scientific articles, and and so many people responded, and it's that's a cool tweet worth checking out. Go go, go follow him on Twitter if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Uh, I guess the one that that stuck out to me the most was this web hypothesis says. And it's kind of a tool where basically uh, you, it's like a browser add-on and you can go to different webs and it allows you to basically mark up any website that you're looking at and share that markup with other people. So you can basically do interesting discussions of, of content and I haven't tried it yet, but it looks kind of cool. And the, the whole markup marking up, uh, Con annotating content is something that I would I will be trying to implement although I'm just going to be trying to mark up my own content this is kind of cool because it's it's being used to mark up any content and somehow they're getting away with that I don't, I'm not sure if like the new European copyright laws uh, would make that illegal over there I'm not sure I have to more research to do but anyway it's it's cool tech and you should check it out uh, okay so well that's uh, cool things I learned about this week in technology and society and uh, I'm gonna hopefully be back for another short review next week um, uh, if you're out there watching thanks for watching and I'm going to end the stream here but I'll be up in a little bit more to play some Starcraft alright peace out internet peoples catch you later <laughs>